Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. NASA contracts SpaceX to build ISS deorbit vehicle. Vertigo Aero awarded NASA SBIR Ignite Phase 1 contract. And Magni X announces new aviation battery product. And I'm your host, Holland Blee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. NASA contracts SpaceX to build ISS deorbit vehicle. SpaceX has won the NASA contract to build the vehicle that will bring the International Space Station out of orbit and to its resting place on the seafloor in a remote ocean location. The deorbit vehicle contract is worth about $843 million for Elon Musk's SpaceX. NASA will operate the mission using SpaceX technology. The current contract does not include the cost of launching the vehicle, and the separate contract for that will potentially go to SpaceX as well. The first structural sections of the ISS were launched into a 250-mile orbit above the Earth in 1998. Some areas, like core power sections and crew cabins, were designed with a lifespan of only about 30 years. The ISS is not a small object circling the Earth. It is 356 feet long, or about one yard shy of an American football field, including the end zones. The solar panels cover an acre, and the 13,696 cubic feet of habitable volume for crew members include seven sleeping quarters, two bathrooms, and a gym. The deorbit vehicle will contain or attach to station components, and using SpaceX's successful technology will be programmed to ensure avoiding populated land areas while falling into a remote area of Earth's oceans. After the break, USAF shows off stealthy CCA prototype drone. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. USAF shows off stealthy CCA prototype drone. The successful first flight of a General Atomics XQ-67A aircraft has taken place, less than a year and a half since being publicly announced. It's solid headway for the program, though those not in the know can be forgiven for seeing the XQ-67A as a fighter or strike aircraft in the making. Instead, the unit is designed as part of the Air Force Research Lab's low-cost, attributable aircraft platform sharing program, particularly the Offboard Sensing Station project. iSpace readies Hakuto R for launch. iSpace has completed the Hakuto R mission to Resilience Lunar Lander planning for a launch this winter. The Hakuto name may seem familiar to those who recall iSpace's work on the little moon rake rover, the Hakuto R. The new unit demanded a host of testing and checks before they could give it a go-ahead for flight, which produced no shortage of information for the team to review. The firm was chosen by NASA to undertake a mission aimed at snatching up some samples of lunar regolith from the surface of the moon. Skunk Works declares success using AI for air-to-air -air combat. Lockheed Martin Skunk Works gamed out the effectiveness of artificial intelligence along with the University of Iowa's Operator Performance Laboratory using one of their L-29 Dolphin jets. The test wasn't too intense, though, with only half of the combatants being a real aircraft from the start. That being said, a full-scale live jet is a fine starting point and a higher level of fidelity than similar tests often enjoy. The Dolphin in question was given simulated to real transfer test objectives against a virtual adversary. 
Lilium completes ground testing of electric jet propulsor. Lilium NV declared a successful bench test using its electric jet propulsion system, running a pair of test units at its headquarters. The success marks another highlight of the firm's continuing campaign to bring their sustainable regional air mobility solution to the eVTOL industry. The bench test took their units to max output, assessing the level of performance and reliability Lilium can expect out of the production units once they're in service. The test rig will go on to assess the aerodynamic and electrical performance of the Lilium Jets technology, too. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Vertigo Aero awarded NASA SBIR Ignite Phase 1 contract. Vertigo Aero has been selected for a contract under NASA's Small Business Innovation Research slash Small Business Technology Transfer Program. During the six months of the program, the company's R&D team will perform conceptual design studies of four different electric aircraft types that incorporate the company's VH3-185 hybrid electric power plant. The engine is an adaptation of a custom version of the SMA SR305, a horizontally opposed four-cylinder air-cooled diesel aircraft engine produced by SMA Engines of Borgia, France. It is EASA certified and FAA validated. It uses commonly available sustainable aviation fuel and burns just 10 gallons per hour at full throttle. The engine can also generate 185 kilowatts or 249 horsepower of electricity for electric motors and electric aircraft. Vertigo's VP of Product Development, Dave Spitzer, said, quote, The batteries in eVTOL aircraft can provide a lot of power, but not for long periods, adding a ton of weight to the aircraft. The VH3, when paired with three hours of fuel, weighs about 80% less than a battery that could provide the same flight time, end quote. The NASA SBIR SBTT program is part of America's Seed Fund, the nation's largest source of early-stage, non-dilutive funding for innovative technologies. It is available to entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses with less than 500 employees to receive funding and non-monetary support to build and commercialize their technology. After these messages, MagniX announces new aviation battery product. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. MagniX announces new aviation battery product. MagniX has launched a new battery it calls Samson for aviation and other applications that require high levels of safety, performance, and reliability. MagniX says its battery has an industry-leading specific energy density of 300 watt-hours per kilogram and a life cycle greater than 1,000 full depth discharge cycles. It also says the battery has proprietary safety features and is optimized for aviation certification. The energy density gives aircraft greater range, and its higher life cycle number lengthens the interval between replacements, lowering operating costs. The product's safety technology includes cell level protections against thermal runaway and the ability for storage at zero charge for extended periods of time. There is active ground cooling during charging for faster turnaround times, as well as an optional feature for passive cooling during flight. The architecture of the battery is modular to enable scalable installation. MagniX CEO Reed McDonald said, quote, 
We are thrilled to introduce this revolutionary battery technology to the world of electric aviation and beyond. With the development of our Samson batteries, MagniX can now offer customers a fully integrated electric powertrain, and it's just the beginning. The roadmap to an energy density of 400 watt-hours per kilogram or more is looking very promising. The future of flight is here, and it is being powered by MagniX." And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.